I'm so excited to share with you about this important group of plants. You say, what is this plant? It's a clover. Well, it's a family of plants that are nitrogen fixing. They can be trees, shrubs, vines, or perennials to find out all about them. We're almost the longest days of the year, We're almost at the peak, longest day of the year. This is always the time where the nitrogen fixers all start to bloom. So what is this group? Well, maybe, maybe you have this plant and you say, oh, I love having alfalfa in my pasture. Okay, you love it. Maybe you have these white clover in your lawn and you go, ah, oh, get this stuff in my lawn. You don't like it. Maybe you love it. You say, oh, I love having white clover in my lawn. You see, there's starting to be some you like, some you don't like. Maybe you have red clover in your pasture. That's great. It's a great forage. Maybe you're in New Zealand and you have gorse and you say, oh, that horrible thing. Maybe you have honey locust and you go, oh, this thing, it's so spiny, it's terrible. Well, some of these plants, and they're all of a group called the nitrogen fixing plants, mostly of the family that is the legume family, leguminosae. And you say, oh, you don't know, why do I have these plants? What are they there for? And you don't care? That's okay. If you give me just a few minutes, I hope to clarify something about them. I hope that you'll gain some appreciation of them and I'll just let the four by four go by. But this group of plants has some amazing qualities. Yes, we call them nitrogen. Let another one go by. Busy day today. Well, these nitrogen fixing plants have amazing qualities. You may know about the legume family from having beans. You grow beans? Do you like beans? Beans are a legume family. They help improve the soil. Not the best ones, but they're pretty good. They certainly feed themselves. You don't have to have very fertile soil to grow garden beans. Maybe you know of the legume family from peas. You know peas? Two peas in a pod? Did you know that you can eat the pea flowers? Mm. Did you know that you can eat the pea shoots, mmm. I don't even have any pods yet, but I'm already, mmm, they're so good. But I'm already enjoying the taste of these peas. Peas are really, mmm, wait a minute. Oh, oh, sorry, I just, mmm. I could be like a rabbit in the pea patch. So peas are an important nitrogen fixer they really help improve the soil. They're one of the better ones to make your soil more fertile. Mm. Sorry. Mm. 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 If you like honey, I love honey. These white clover are super important in the temperate climate for getting honey. They are, they're probably what a lot of beekeepers in our area and in a lot of temperate areas, they end up bringing in most of their honey thanks to this plant, the white clover. There's other ones, red clover and so on, but these are really important. They're also a great pasture plant. If you have animals, if you have horses, cows, sheep, this is a super important plant for your pastures. They can have 24, 25% protein, really produce a lot of milk. Animals will get fat with these. One of the main things they're doing is they are actually feeding the ones that are right beside them, the grasses. So clovers feed their companions or the grasses. Now, maybe you say, oh, 
I don't want to have them. They're in my lawn and they get in the way of having all just grass. I hope you get over it because just grass is a monoculture. Monocultures don't work really well. Neither does just a grass lawn. <sighs> you say, oh, I just want grass. You know what? Get yourself artificial turf. It looks like just grass. You won't have to try to eliminate all these other plants that are there. Ouch. For a reason. Even the insects are there for a reason. Even the mosquitoes are there for a reason. But these plants are really meant to be companions, soil improvers, so that you could get better grass. So your grass will grow really nicely. That's just one of the roles, but that is an important role for them. So we call them nitrogen fixers, but we could call them soil improvers. Look at them that way. Another great perennial that you'll find in the grasslands, because it is a grassland species, is false indigo, Batesia. You may have lupins as well. That's a common one you'll see. And there are quite a lot of others, depending on where you live. But these make really nice garden plant as well, if you want for your perennial border. Here's another perennial. And I really, I can't remember the name of it. I got a lot of plants here in this place. Some of you are yelling, ah, da, da, that's what it is. Well, tell me what it is. I wanna know what it is. This one I planted as one of my prairie collection plants and it's done okay. But here's a gardening tip for you. When you have plants that grow, don't do a full cleanup. Don't remove all these stems from last year. Because in these stems, oh, this one I just broke off, but in these stems, there are, this, these stems are habitat, and often some of the wasps and bees will actually drill holes in them and nest inside of these dry stems. So please don't do a full garden cleanup in the fall. Leave some of these stems that are strong enough to withstand and stay even with the winter and the snow. Leave them stay for the insects the next year. Your garden will be better for it. Now that you've been introduced to the family, the legume family, let me introduce you to some of the... I still have pieces of peas in my teeth. Let me introduce you to some of the rest of the family in the form of trees and shrubs and vines. Let's start with the vine. Here in the permaculture orchard, I try to grow a whole range of nitrogen fixing plants. And one of the ones that are really on the edge here that have never flowered yet, but that grow pretty good is this wisteria vine. And you see the usually, usually legume plants. One of the characteristics of legumes is they have a compound leaf. This is one leaf. whole thing is one leaf. And each of these are leaflets with the stem. That's a characteristic of many nitrogen fixing trees and shrubs and vines. Maybe you have kudzu and you go, oh that horrible thing, it's invading it. Well, it's doing something. It's... Yes, Mr. Cardinal. It's actually trying to improve the soil. I don't want it. I am trying to get rid of it. Yeah. Listen, they're there for a reason. Even that gorse, you think, oh, that horrible thing. It's there for a reason. Wisteria is a vine that we can grow in our area. Eh, someday maybe it will flower, but in the meantime, we're trying it. Don't be afraid of trying plants. Oh, rose-breasted grosbeak. Oh, oriole. Cardinal. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the Permaculture Orchard. Half trees already? Pruningcourse.com. Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye. Here in the Permaculture Orchard, I try to go, grow a whole 
ったら。